For those of you that know me, you know there are two topics that I'm always ready to talk about. One is irrigation, but the other one is planters. No matter what time of year it is, I feel like there's always something going on out in our fields that has to do with our planter and how it performed that sets us up for a conversation about how we can be more successful going forward. And I know right now, planters are possibly the furthest thing from your mind. You're thinking about getting up and down these rows with the combine, getting the auger wagon back to the truck and everything else, and planters aren't front of mind. But I'm gonna challenge you today as you're spending time out in your fields to look at things critically and think about how planters affect what you're doing, and especially your soybeans. I'm Keith Byerly, Precision Ag Manager at Central Valley Ag, and this is your Precision Focus that corresponds with my article on the CVA blog site. Now I know that soybeans aren't nearly as interesting of a topic as corn at even some of the best times of the years, but they're just as important as corn when it comes to our bottom line, so we need to pay more attention to them. As I stand out here in a soybean field right now, I challenge you to take a critical look across yours, and I want you to prepare yourself to take a mental scorecard and score your fields. I want you to look at some of the best areas that you have in your fields right now and give them a score on three things. Number one, do I have lodge beans in the best areas in my field that I don't have in other areas? Number two, do I have disease pressure in my best areas that I don't have in other areas of my field? And number three, is my yield more disappointing in the best areas of my field than it is in the other areas of my field? If your answer is yes to any of those questions, then we need to start examining why. I'm going to be pretty willing to bet that there's one of three reasons why you would get a yes answer to any one of those. It's either irrigation, fertility, or population. Now, with the irrigation side, that's pretty easy to take off the table. We talk about that at length all year long. Let's move that one to the side right now. We talk about fertility all the time. Usually our best areas of the field have some of our best fertility. We're going to take that one off the table for a second and focus in on population. It's quite possible that the reason that the population is wrong on our best areas of the field is because it's our best fertility areas. Where those plants suffer for nothing, they have an abundance of fertility and they compete more with one another and end up being ropey and taller. And that's why we get the lodging, that's why we get the disease pressure and all of those things. Consider, if you will, what those areas of the field might look like if we took 10 or 15% off of our population and back down in there. Would we still see the competition for those beans getting so tall or would they branch out more? That's where the discussion of population starts. On the other side of the coin, we've got those of you that farm in the hills. For anybody that's got high pH hills with the buckskin hills that we call them up north, you know what it's like to have a soybean crop that wouldn't rub the belly of a running coyote out there. Those are a problem as well. We know that those areas of the field sometimes respond more to a higher population because when we increase plant density, we process more of the calcium that that soil is releasing and we reduce the iron chlorosis that makes our beans come out short and not yield as much. In either one of these situations, population's really key and I want you to think about that while you're harvesting right now. But now I want you to flip over to the other side. Think about all the things that we just discussed from a multi-variety standpoint of what's going on out in the field. If we employed multi-variety out there and now started changing our hybrids as well as our populations to adapt to those areas of the field, is it possible that we would capture a great additional yield out there? It absolutely is. And when we look at the cost of doing variable rate soybeans, it's really no more than what we look at at corn. If we can increase yield one half of 1%, we're back in black for that investment and making money in the long run. So that's my take home for you today. I want you to look at your soybeans and critically judge your best areas of the field and your worst areas of the field. Variable rate seeding isn't just for our corn anymore. We can do it on soybeans. We have a great idea how to do it on soybeans and we've got some proven methodology that lets us have success out there. Let's begin to have this conversation while we're out in the field right now with your FSAs. An extra set of eyeballs is often critically important for identifying problems, and this is no different. So I want you to think about variable rate soybeans and be ready to have that conversation as we enter the cold winter months. Thanks.